Hello and welcome. In this video, we will start a new Spring Boot project and add Spring security to protect our app. I will show you how to use the Spring initializer, pick the needed parts and set up everything in an IDE. Then we will see how Spring security gives us a login page right away and I will show you how to create your own username and password. By the end, you will have a simple but strong start with Spring security. Let's begin. To create a new project, I will use my favorite online Spring Initializer tool. Head over to start.spring.io. From here, we can generate our Spring Boot project. I will use Maven as my dependency management tool. My primary programming language is Java. For the Spring Boot version, at the time of this recording, the latest version is 3.4.1. Always choose to use the latest version of Spring. For what I am going to teach you in this tutorial, Spring Boot version 3 is the minimum required version. Now let's change some metadata. Here for the group, I am entering my domain name. Then in the artifact, I am providing the name of our project, Spring Security Demo. Everything else is fine. For the packaging, I am going to select JAR. And for the Java version, I am choosing Java 21. This is the latest long term supported version. Please note that the minimum required version of Spring Boot 3 is Java 17. So, if your Java version is 17, it will also work. The code I will show you in this tutorial is compatible with the latest Java version newer than Java 17. Now, it's time to add the necessary dependencies. The first dependency I am going to add is Spring Web. This will enable me to expose and handle RESTful endpoints in my application. Then, we need to include Spring Security. That's all the dependencies needed for now. This is a simple application and I will focus on getting you up and running with Spring Security. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information at once. If you would like to explore Spring Security in more depth, feel free to check out my other videos on Spring Boot customization. You can find the playlist link in the description. Now let's generate the project. Click on the generate button. Our project is generated and downloaded as a zip file. Go ahead, unzip the project and import it into your favorite IDE. Here, I am imported the project into my IDE. I am using IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate Edition. This is paid version, but you are not required to use this. JetBrains also provides a community edition of the IntelliJ IDEA, which is completely free. You can use that. It's more than enough for our project. If you are using Spring Tool Suit, Eclipse, NetBeans, or any other IDE that you are comfortable with, go with that. The IDE is just a tool. Use whatever IDE you are comfortable with. But make sure you know how to compile and build your code. So here is our project. Now let's have a quick look at the file and folder structure of the project. The first file I am going to show you is pom.xml. pom stands for Project Object Model. This is the file that contains the necessary information about our project. Here is the Spring Boot version. Then we have the project metadata that we have defined earlier while creating the project. This is our group name, the artifact ID and the name of the project. Then we have the dependencies section where all the dependencies are defined. We have included only two dependencies here. This is the dependency for Spring Security and this one Spring Web. Then we have Spring Boot Starter Test Dependency that is added by default. Now let's explore other files and folders. Here we have this src directory. Inside this we have two subdirectories, main and test. All the test files that we write for testing the application will go into this test directory. It already contains a test class Spring Security Demo Application Test. We are not going to do any testing in this project. So let's close it for now. We have this main directory. Our main source code will go into this main directory. Here we have two subdirectories, Java and resources. Let's expand this resources directory. This directory contains two more subdirectories, static and templates, along with a file application.properties. The static directory contains static resources like images, CSS, and JavaScript files. The templates directory holds the HTML files and this application.properties file holds the necessary configuration of the application like your database credentials, OAuth or server settings. Now check this Java subdirectory. 
we will put all the Java code inside this Java directory. Here we have this root package. Inside this package, we have a class Spring Security Demo Application. Let's open it. This class contains the main method. Every Java program needs to have a main method. Now let's run the application. We can run the application by clicking on this play icon beside the main method or we can click this play icon beside the class name. Alternatively, we can also use the play icon at the top to run the project. Let's run it. Here is an error. Update module SDK in project settings to 21 or higher. I had a project that was built with Java 17. So I set my IDE to use that version. So I set my IDE to use that version of Java. But here, for this project, I am going to use Java 21. So we need to change the SDK. Let's do this. Open the project settings. Here is the SDK. I have installed multiple Java version on my Mac. I use SDK to install and manage multiple Java in a single machine. If you want a separate tutorial on how to manage multiple Java version in a single machine using, using SDK man, please comment below. So I am going to select the SDK version 21.0.5 and save the changes back to the editor closing the console now running the project it's taking some time our project is started on port 8080 let's access it from the browser we are running the application in the local host and the port is 8080 here we have this login page simply by adding spring security as a dependency in our project spring provides us with this fully functional login page out of the box Let's log in here. Since we have not configured anything yet, we can use the default username and password provided by Spring Security. The default username is user and the password is automatically generated when we start the application. Let's check. Here in the console, you can see the Spring has generated a security password. This is our password. Just below the password, there's an important message. This generated password is for development use only. Your security configuration must be updated before running your application in production. Of course, we need to address this. The password is auto-generated and will change every time we restart the server. We cannot use this default user and auto-generate password in the production. To handle that, we need to customize Spring Security to use a username and password stored in the database. However, for this basic getting started tutorial, this setup is fine. If you want to learn how to configure Spring Security to store user data in the database and authenticate against it, check out my other video linked in the description. Let's copy the password back to the browser. Our username is user and paste the password. Sign in. We have successfully signed in. But right now, we are encountering a white level error. Let's check the status. 404 which is not found this happens because we have not defined any endpoint to handle this url let's fix that first let's log out from here log out in the ide closing the console open the sidebar here inside the root package i will create a new java class give it a name let's say home controller in this class i will add the rest controller annotation this annotation makes the class act as a REST resource, allowing it to handle HTTP request. Next, we need to define a method that will execute when a specific URL is accessed. Let's define the public method that returns a string. We'll name the method say hello and it will return the message hello world. To make this method act as an endpoint, we need to map it. Since it will handle get request, we'll use the get mapping annotation. Inside the parenthesis of get mapping, we'll specify the endpoint URL. In this case, it will be root URL. Now, let's restart the application. Once the application starts, you will see the newly generated password in the console. Copy the password, then go back to the browser. Enter the default username, which is user, and paste the copied password. No. I don't want to save the password. We have successfully signed in and here you can see our hello world message displayed. Now let's make a small configuration change. Instead of using the default username and 
auto-generated password will define our own custom username and password. Closing the console. Also, closing the tabs. Opening the sidebar. Here, from the resources directory, open the application.properties file. This is where we can configure various settings for our application, including defining a custom username and password. We can define our username using spring.security.user.name. Let's say our username is admin and the password is spring.security.user.password. Giving a dummy password. Now let's start the application. Opening the browser, refresh. Here, in this login form, provide our newly created username and password. Our username is admin and giving my password. Sign in. So, we have successfully signed in. Of course, this setup is not the most secure. We have defined a static username and password in our configuration file, which is fine for demonstration purpose but not suitable for real world applications. In real world scenario, things are much more complex. Fortunately, Spring Security is a highly flexible framework and can be configured to handle these complexities with ease. But that's a topic for another tutorial. If you are interested in learning how to implement a more secure configuration, simply click on the video displayed on the screen. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.